All right, guys. So today's discussion is about the meta game, and so I posted a、uh, article that is.、Um, hold on, how do I get this lower in my my headphones? I gotta. I need to hear myself talk here. All right, here we go. All right, so the discussion today is、uh, the meta game, and basically, it's a pattern that I've detected over time, and this is the reason why I'm in NFTs right now, is because it is part of the meta game, and so there's multiple meta games that happen, right? And so we're gonna go and discuss this on a broader thing, but with NFTs, it changes over time. So the, the the greater theme right now is NFTs. The previous theme was ICOs, and then before that, you would just invest in anything that was going on Coinbase because you knew that would go up. And then before that, it was anything that was on、uh, Bitcoin Talk would go up. And before that, it was anything that was going to get listed on Coin Market Cap would go up. So those are all the different meta games that are happening. And right now, we're in the NFT gaming metaverse、uh, meta game. Right? All right. It's a little bit confusing because they have the same. Names, metaverse, and the meta game.、It's、pretty meta. Yep, and so the analogy here is a lot of you guys play video games, right? You either play like、uh, Hearthstone, or you play Magic: The Gathering, or League of Legends. And what happens within these games is there's different times when different strategies work extremely well, and then you have a lot of people play those strategies, right? So let's take League of Legends. There was probably a patch. I remember when I was playing when Teemo would scale his attack speed, and that meant that if you would play Teemo,、uh, you would probably win the game. And it didn't matter whether you did like a mushroom build or an attack speed build. He was just the best character. And so the meta game in League of Legends was Teemo, right? And so this sort of happens in life and in investing as well, especially in the crypto space. Is that? There's different meta games that are happening, and right now we're in the NFT meta game, and you have to realize that it's not always going to be the NFT meta game. There's going to be another meta game that comes after this. That is, so it's important to not look at things as so binary and absolute. Like I'm going to hold these NFTs for 25 years,、um, and the reason I'm personally in NFTs right now is because it's the meta game. That's where the attention is. That's where the audience is. That's where the money is. And right now we're a little bit in the, the sub meta game. Is、uh, is initially it was profile picture stuff, and then it moved into like who has a good community, and then it was about utility. And so then a lot of the things were like, is there staking in the NFTs? So that was a cool thing. And then it was the casino stuff. So you have like the DJ and coin flip that give royalties. So there's all these meta games, and if you follow the meta game, that's where the money is, right? You can't. Be investing in profile picture stuff right now in NFTs because that meta game's over. That happened. The balance has changed in the game, right? So the character that was once the best character is no longer the best character because they changed the rules. So I don't know if you guys play Diablo, if you play、uh, Path of Exile, any game you play, as they update the rules, the the balance of the game changes. You have to change how you play the game, right? So What's there's. What's the next meta game? Well, right now we're in no man's land. We don't really know what the next. See, yeah, utilities are better than profile pictures,、um, and so you have to pay attention. And the the thing with crypto and especially NFTs is the meta game switches very quickly. So you have to know. You have to be really paying attention. If you jump away for a week, you might miss what's going on in 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 the game, right? And so that's the real key here in in how to make money is that. You have to pay attention to the meta game, and so there's two meta games here. There's there's many meta games, right? One of them is、uh, gaming and metaverse and NFTs, and those are sort of all in this round of the crypto、uh, boom, right? And the last one it was ICOs, and so if you could get a whitelist into an ICO, you would make money. And now if you can get the whitelist into a popular NFT, you can make money. And if and when there's a crash, and then we come back, there might be some new technology. That everyone runs to. Maybe it's zk rollups or optimism rollups or、uh, privacy stuff. You have to pay attention. Or maybe it's actual games that they've matured and then they launch, and then it's the in-game economy that's worth a lot of money. So I think it's very important to be fluid in what you're investing in, and not just NFTs for NFTs' sake. And they may or may not be around here on on a long scale, but you have to 
yeah, so Punk, that's a good point, is like, do people see NFTs as art? I think that was mainly an excuse for making money, right? Like, I don't think that if, if the NFTs weren't worth any money, that they wouldn't really care about the art, right? Like, that's a, art, digital art has been a thing forever. Like, you had deviant art, what existed for years, and people would do crazy awesome pieces of art that you would use as your wallpaper on your computer, and it wasn't worth any money, so there wasn't any activity happening around it. All you would do is like it. And right, then, now it's a status symbol. Now it's a status symbol because it's tied to a dollar amount because you can flip it to someone else. And so that's the meta game we're in right now, right? Is that's where you're making money. That's why I'm involved in NFTs and I'm happy to stop doing NFTs as soon as the metagame switches. And that's where the savvy investors are separated from the people who get left behind in each phase, right? If you're in 2022 and you're still out here saying I'm an ICO investor and that's all I'm going to invest in, you're totally fucked. You don't have any money. You lost all your money. Everything went to zero and a couple of projects stayed around and a couple people made some money and likely they sold earlier than when it got to their top. But you have to be very savage with your mindset about all this stuff. Utility is in it. Everybody's talking. They keep saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should explain what utility. So utility means that there's some value. So it's the, the way that this word utility became a thing in what NFTs. What does it actually mean? Utility means that it has a function, that there's a use other than just looking at the pretty art, right? And so the, the way utility evolved in NFTs was first it was just the art and people's logic was, I like the art, so I'm buying it, right? And then, and this is all a lie, right? All this stuff is a lie because people were trying to lie to themselves and say that they didn't want to make money. The whole point of NFTs is to make money. That's the reason why everyone's doing everything. So first it was, I like the art, right? And then it was, it's not about the art, it's about the community, right? So like with Board Ape Yacht Club, like you have a community and this is why I, this is where I got into NFTs was the community aspect because I would buy these expensive NFTs I would get into these discords and it would give me a lot of alpha, right? So there was actually a way for me to monetize spending $10,000 on an NFT because then I would find out from these guys what the next NFT was. I'd be able to mint it. I'd get access to whitelists and then I'd make more money and more money. So that was the whole point for me was that the community would give me access to alpha and that alpha was valuable enough for me to spend $10,000 because I would make twenty or $30,000 figuring out what the next thing was, right? Then uh, the next utility after community was people realized that, okay, everyone has a big community now, right? The community's out of the bag. You can make a big community. You can buy a big community. So what else are we going to do? So then there was staking. And this is where it sort of branches off into a lot of different things. DCF did a really unique, and they were the, probably the first ones to do this sort of royalty structure where all of the fees generated by the game would go back to the holders. And so that was interesting. And then you have staking with like D-Gods and uh, the Dragons and uh, the, all these other projects where they have some uh, marketplace or something that generates fees and you can stake it. See, a lot, oh. of, people are, a lot of people are, actually Tia especially is, yeah. is, is pretty dialed. People are looking for passive income. Correct, yeah, yeah. So that is the utility of this metagame is passive income, right? So they see things like D gods, which are giving you dust for staking. So staking and also what DCF is doing and the like uh, only dice and all these things, there's a passive income play. So people want to buy something, they want to get recurring revenue out of it. Do you guys and think that the giveaway card is a, is a uh, passive income? Passive income? It's, it's, it's like Hold a- Hold on, no. what do you guys think? Is the giveaway card passive income to y'all that have won? No, Cage? But what if you're holding it and it's worth more money and then it's giving you money? What do you call that? Well, it's a chance not at passive. Recurring. Yeah, it's, it's not a passive. Chance. Okay. I just want to see where everybody go with it. Yeah, so it's a different, if it's a different utility mechanic than a, a straight passive income where, let's say, like the Mecha Gorillas where you can get a dollar a day from staking. Right, it's an investment more than it is a, uh, a passive income uh, utility. It is a utility. Um, so there is, it's not about the art of the card, right? It's the, the art of the card actually means nothing. And there's also no rarity. Access to passive income. It's not passive income because it's not recurring. So it's a, it's a chance. It's, it's closer. It's a, chance. it's a recurring chance. It is a recurring chance, but it is still a chance. Passive income implies that it's coming every month. Um, and so, 
and it's it's most passive income the way it works is that you get a fraction of the value of your thing but our card you get more than the card costs you so so most things if you buy if you buy it for a hundred dollars they're giving you a dollar a day whereas this you have a chance at winning a hundred and fifty dollars every friday right so it's it's more it's not a passive income thing it's a almost like a lot like i don't want to use that word but you can win more than the thing that you paid for it versus something that's gonna give you one one hundredth every day of what you paid for it perpetual lottery ticket maybe we'll do a lot of winners for small prizes for like a couple weeks in a row where a lot of people are gonna win but it's small let's see if that feels right so the, the, there's two theories right is like one do you want the broad you want more people to win alex i fuck with you yeah alex is a good idea do you want more people to win but they're not gonna win a big amount and this is sort of the shift that we did last week with the card was that the the prize that you win is at least greater than or equal to the current floor price of the nft and so what that means is you're it's not a passive income thing it is something that you you are actually in profit almost immediately if you win if you get lucky enough to win you're in profit uh so anyone who bought it for 0.5 and then they get 1.3 solana you're you insta one and now you have the card for free and you made back your investment um so yeah point one to every holder yeah no, we could no, not point one not point oh one but we could do something where there's a lot of winners a lot of winners and it's a smaller amount but so many winners that it'll feel passive because you're like i hold a giveaway card and i'm always getting something not i'm getting the chance to win big but i'm always getting something i'm gonna consider that one over here after the stream, I really don't hate that. Then we'll talk, then we'll get a little bit of a different feel on what does passive mean. If you maybe you don't win every week, but maybe every other week, where there's if you have a giveaway card while well, there's still not that many of them out, you're pretty much guaranteed. right. So if if you give, we could give 0.25 to 50 people, in which case you have a one in four chance of winning 0.25, which is not the value of the NFT. But if you can well, have you're a winning. Basically, your the statistics say that every month you should potentially be a, a winner yeah, in theory. Yeah, Devin, Abraham, Brian, and uh, Cage, just four four of the homies on the chat. There's a one in four of them for sure is winning. Cage is like, yeah, I'm the one that's gonna be winning. Yeah, so we'll yeah, Audi owns ten. He bought ten. He bought another four over the weekend. He's our he's our guy, and he's also a new mod in the Discord. Um, you guys like this idea though? Do you want to? You want us to fuck with this? Lower amount, but you're. What? Let's hear it. I need to know what we're doing. Yes or no? Yes, yes. Nick Shaw. Yeah, so we can we can do that. Like I'm I'm totally open to experimenting with unique ways, and this is sort of how our utility is flexible, in that we can do whatever we want. 0.25. It's a, it's exactly the right amount. A quarter soul, but a lot of winners. 70 winners. Yeah, well, hey, we can, All every right. week's a new week, so we can do, we can definitely do that, and maybe we'll try it this Friday, we'll do um, a bunch of winners, instead of, uh, instead of uh, a couple big winners, and then maybe we can also do things where one week it's one person gets to win a crazy amount of Solana, right? What about this one? What about everybody's a winner and then before you get it to your wallet you have the option that we're gonna flip it on stream and either you get to win the whole thing or you lose it yeah we could double or nothing like the winnings double or nothing to every winner Devin's ready to hurl. so you win a quarter soul and then we say Devin you want a quarter soul we're flipping it right here for everyone you get a half a soul or nothing are you ready to ride Devin's flipping yeah, we could definitely do something like that. Here you go, let's fucking go. Yeah. No, yes, that would take a lot of time. We're not doing it for everyone. We're picking a few of the people, some of the subs, some of the big guys. Yeah, if we I could do it name. for we could do it for the whales. So if you're a whale, we give you the opportunity to double or nothing, something like that. Yeah, Nova, you're right. That's why we're not doing that as much. Yeah. So, so that's. Yeah, so we got a lot of interesting ideas. Starting um, in April, there's going to be a lot more juice for the whales. Just beware. Remember my promise. 
I'm going away to Mexico. That's why I got pushed back a week. It's gonna get it's gonna get different for the whales it's very soon. April first. April Fool's Day. No, no, it's not gonna be okay. April second. No <laughs> fooling you. Yeah, it's gonna be. You gotta make sure if you have three that you're verified as a whale. We're gonna have some more whales starting in a week. We got a bunch of. I know. Mexico. What up, Ryden? Yeah, we have a uh, we have daylight savings time. So if you're not in the U.S., we uh, switched by an hour. So a lot of you guys got uh, got bamboozled by that. Um, Do you guys like the leverage plays for the whales? I'm going to Spain in June, Alex. You like the leverage stuff? Okay. That was the music on now. Hold on. Three, Aaron. And you need to be verified. Yeah, you need to have three uh, in the Discord. Uh, verified in the Discord with Matricia, and you will be a. Uh... What was that? Uh, like 27. I like Tia. Yeah, he's good. Um, all right, we're going to keep going on this metagame discussion, and then we'll jump back to uh, the giveaway card in a little bit. Um, because we need to level everyone up here. That's the other part. Instead of just giving giveaways, which is cool, but that's not the point, and only uh, 1,000 people eventually in a community that's going to be much bigger than 1,000 people uh, are going to be getting the giveaways. So it's going to be a smaller portion of what we do on the stream. The, the overall goal is to teach people uh, about investing, about real estate, about how to catch the trends, um, and so narrative investing, which is an, a synonym for the metagame, um, and that's what we're going to be talking about is narrative investing. So you have to understand, and, and you guys are all in crypto Twitter and you're in the Discord, so you're very much within the community, and that's, that's a crazy amount of alpha, is that you're able to understand what people are talking about. And the things that the smart people are talking about are the things that you want to invest in. That's, that's where you really want to be. And right now, one question, why only Solana NFTs? That's a good question. Um, I don't really like uh, the gas fees in Ethereum. I'll be honest, like in terms of uh, technology, I'm not too high up on Ethereum at the moment. And so my greater thesis uh, in general, and I made a big investment in Solana, is because uh, that's not really how uh, investing, like like the technology is a little bit broken. And like I have an investment in Metis, for example, which is a uh, layer two on top of Ethereum. So if Ethereum or Metis figures out how to solve uh, the problem of the gas, gas fees, then uh, I do have a position and I'm, I will make money if it, if it goes up. Um, but in general, where do I see the developers at this moment are working on uh, Nier and Solana? You know, and obviously AVAX and Phantom have some people too, but I made my choice. I decided that I think Solana is where um, the money's at. Uh, in terms of the price right now, I don't really care about the price. Uh, prices go up and down. I'm an investor, so I'm, I'm here for the long term. Uh, Polygon is cool too. Um, and, and so this is a, so within the narrative, right? Investing is like a multi-level thing. And so one of the things that I look at personally, and this is what drove my uh, my investment in Ethereum back when it was, uh, I don't know, I had a bunch of Ethereum and then I sort of st stopped thinking about it. And then when, when it was at like $150, I was like, this is going to go off right now. Um, and that's sort of when it ran up to from 150 bucks to, I don't know, $4,000. And so uh, I'm not a part of the Solana team. I'm just invested in it. Uh, so the reasons why, and there's two really good reasons, especially with these, th this technology. So like, this is aside from NFTs cause NFTs have their own reasons for going up and down community utility, all that stuff. Um, I don't think phantom is dead. I don't, uh, Andre sort of had a meltdown and so that's not good, but, um, I, and I don't follow phantom that much, so I can't talk, I can't talk on it, uh, that intelligently. But what I can tell you, and this is sort of 
what you can apply to any crypto investment that you're going to make is the value is the developers, right? The value is the ecosystem that's built around it. And so what you want to look at is two things, at least with Solana, right? If, if you came to me and I, I develop apps for people, or I, at least I have in the past, um, what network would I want to build it on? And, and the answer to that question is the answer that a lot of developers are going to have, which the answer is Solana because A, the fees and B, the speed. Obviously, there's network issues and stuff like that. But when it's working, that's where you want to build your thing, right? It, it, it enables a whole new realm of applications that could be possible, right? DGen CoinFlip cannot be built on Ethereum because if it cost you, if you wanted to flip 0 0.05, 100, 10 bucks, and it costs you $150 to, to do that transaction, it doesn't make any sense, right? So as a developer, that is a moot point, it's over. So there's two things. One, that the Solana Foundation has, I don't know, $800 million that they're deploying to developers building out on their platform. So you already know that the amount of apps and smart things that are gonna come on to Solana is gonna be worth $800 million if not more, right? That's the money going into the system and you would expect at least a 4X multiple on the value from smart developers building things and building equity, right? Like if you're gonna go build a bunch of houses, the house values are not gonna be just the dollars you put in, right? It's gonna be worth more than what you put into it if you do it right. Some of them are gonna fail, but a lot of them are gonna have a huge multiple. So those are the two things is where are the developers, right? If you can go look where the developers are, that is the biggest, thing ever and one of the ways that you can tell where the developers are is where is the money for the developers right so a that's freelance clients and b that's grants and and investor money which solana and also near which is which is lower than solana right now near has 800 million dollars that they're uh offering to uh developers so that's where you want to look is like all right you know what? There's going to be $800 million worth of stuff going on in near protocol. And the valuation is what? One or $2 billion. So you're valuing near at exactly the amount of money that's put into it. I think that's a low valuation, right? I think that's a mispriced asset. If you know $800 million are coming into the system, how could it, I mean, it would have to be a complete disaster. Um, Armand, we did a, we did a demo of uh, entrance already. Let's see, any, any questions in the chat about this uh, thesis, right? So like we have, you can have multiple theses and you invest based on those and then some of them come true and some of them don't, right? So yeah, Rust, Rust is the, the programming language for both Nier and uh, Solana. So you're gonna have a lot of crossover developers uh, working on both. And then some that can't get funding on Solana are gonna move to Nier um, and also, in terms of near, um, it's not listed on any U.S. exchanges yet, right? So there's, they still have a lot of. They're going to go through all the regulation stuff, and they're, you know, probably going to go up in value over time, right? Um, and then the next, so those are like the L ones. That's the L one wars. Is like Ethereum, near Solana. Um, you also have Phantom. You also have uh, Avax. They all have different proof of work, proof of stake combinations ways to secure the network um yeah rust is a coding language um and so that that's like the l1s right and then you have the next narrative that's going to happen in crypto which the previous narrative was games and nfts right and then the one before that was icos so things that would ico they were new like polka dot would i remember that uh uh east was an ico right so you have all of those and then uh, coming up, the next thing I, I believe is going to be privacy. So you want to look at companies like Offshift, uh, Dusk, Rose. They're all doing ZK rollups, which is zero, zero knowledge proofs. So basically that allows a lot of applications. If you look at DeFi, one of the problems is that you can only do loans with people that are anonymous. And what we need in order to expand DeFi to be closer to traditional finance is like, if I'm going to go get a big loan, a, I don't want to put up 75% of the loan value to get that loan. That doesn't work for me because if I'm going to go buy a million dollar house, right? And I need to put up 850 to $750,000, like 
like that doesn't make a lot of sense right putting up 75 percent of the value just to unlock 25 percent. i might as well just have the million dollars and do it like that or buy a less expensive buy a house for 750 all cash um so what we need to unlock that is to be able to put social security numbers bank statements like all these these traditional finance information that needs to be able to go on the blockchain so that the, the your counterparty the lender um can uh be a part of that right the, the lender needs to be able to verify your information to know that there at least there's some collateral or that there's something that uh you can you can uh uh back the loan by so you could go put 20 or 25 percent down and then go unlock 80 percent of the value that's yeah so a credit line and so you can't have a credit line unless you have that that information like yours like if you don't have the social security number you could garnish their wages you can go to the lawyers and be like hey we need to sue this person and you should be able to do that if someone's defaulted on your loan right that's that's what's holding crypto back so zero knowledge proofs allows you to put this information on the blockchain it can be verifiable right but it doesn't necessarily need to be public to everyone so i can't go look on the blockchain and then go pull a bunch of social security numbers and steal that information because you know the second you do that it's over so but you need to have it in the blockchain especially if i want to stay anonymous or whatever however we're going to do it um so the current the current meta is nfts right that's the meta that we're in uh, the meta will change out of nfts when the bubble bursts right and which will inevitably happen it, it's gonna happen um a lot of the projects that are around today and a lot of the smaller projects will just dwindle down right as as attention and and people will be uh lose their interest in it and like the thing that i think like if you look at any anything today that's worth a lot of money that was like a collectible there was a phase when everyone forgot about it uh, for almost everything, right? And that's what generates the value. And, and like, if we're talking about Board Ape Yacht Club or uh, CryptoPunks, like in my opinion, when is that going to be valuable? I could imagine that being valuable when I'm, let's say, 15 years from now, right? And we're actually using the metaverse. Now the metaverse is a thing in daily life. And most of the people that own their, their crypto punks have lost the seed phrases to their wallets, right? There was a time when, like, this is my vision of the future, is that it goes down to nothing, right? And it's like, dude, you could go, there would be a point where you could go buy a Charizard card for literally one cent and no one would care about it. And people would just tear them up, they would throw them out. And that's what made them become rare is this point in time where they were valuable for a little bit. And then they completely got forgotten. And the people who were like, yo, when I'm older, I really want to have a shiny Charizard because that's going to remind me of my childhood. So when the people today who are 15, who could never afford a CryptoPunk, but then CryptoPunks, the bubble bursts and they go down, they keep going down five years, 10 years go by and they're worth nothing. You could go buy them for pennies, right? And then what's going to happen is they're going to come back. They're going to come back. And in, like the people that are 15 today, they're going to be 25 and they're not going to care. They're going to be going out with girls. They're not going to care about metaverse things. They're going to be like, oh my God, I remember when I was a kid and then, and like they were so cool, blah, blah, blah. And the, the people who buy it then when it's not worth anything are going to make a ton of money because when those kids turn 30 and the metaverse is real and we have crazy haptic gloves and it's like ready player one and they put the crypto punk that that 99% of them have been lost in the ether of the blockchain and the passwords are forgotten and no the profile pictures no one's seen those in years and then I go in there and I'm like no way dude remember when those were worth a hundred thousand dollars two hundred three hundred thousand dollars that's so crazy now there's a memory there's a point in time when it was insane and then the bubble burst like for me it's Furbies like you have Furbies you have uh, Beanie Babies you have Pokemon cards like all of those, some of them are never gonna make it back and some of them will, right? Like I could totally see in 10 years, someone having a Beanie Baby in a glass case in a multi-million dollar house. And they're like, yeah, this is one of the first Beanie Babies ever made. And it's just like, you remember that from 
your past, your history. And you want to like, as you get older and you become successful, and th this is the thing that's driving the market is like, who has this money is the people that are, that I want to remember their childhood. And they have so much money that just getting a regular beanie baby wouldn't do it. But going and getting the beanie baby that sold for a million dollars back when they were a kid and now they can afford it and it's not, it's worth $10,000, but they buy it. And then more and more people are like, dude, that's really cool. A, a couple YouTubers buy it and it goes back up. It goes back up. It goes back up. And then all of a sudden it's impossible to buy because it's a $10 million beanie baby. And it's sitting in a $30 million house in a shelf, right? When you walk in and everyone who goes and sees it's like, oh my God, that's so cool. Like that's what's happening with Charizard. Charizard was the number one Pokemon. And then it totally comes back. And so that's what's going to happen with NFTs. And I want everyone to be realistic about that. I don't want people to think I'm shitting on NFTs, but it's a phase, right? Like I'm, I'm here to make money, right? That's what I do when I'm getting into stuff and the attention and the money is in NFTs right now. And it's not always going to be. So you have to be able to shift gears, right? With the times. I don't want people to get, and this is for my community. I love you guys. So I want to tell you how it is. Like you don't want to get too locked in on nfts you want to know that this is where it's at right now but it's not always going to be here and you have to be able to just switch your mind and you're not going to want to do it uh but that's that's what we all have to be thinking here is that nfts are where the time and attention is then we're going to have a bubble and it's going to get really dark right and no one's going to be talking about it and these discords are going to be empty and you have to know that that's the time when you want to lock and load you want to get ready and make sure that you have some money sitting aside right to to be able to go and acquire things when they're super super cheap right like yeah you also want to hold stuff because you never know what's going to happen and you never know like what's going to be the one so i'm holding my monkey and i'm cool with it going to zero right like you have to be cool with some things going to zero but then you also have to have money going aside like outside of the market which is the hardest part mentally right it's like when everything's going up and you have money sitting on the sideline you're like shit this isn't making money but that's when that that's the key dollars because when things go down and you're able to buy it with a lot of money that's when you're going to crush it and that's where i've always made my money is something goes up right ethereum's at two thousand dollars you start selling and everyone's like dude you're dumb it goes up to four thousand dollars you're like fuck i should have held it and then it goes to 150 dollars, and you go put fifty thousand dollars into ethereum it goes up and you made a million bucks so that's the key thing that you have to uh, uh, think about here is like, you need to have your buckets and this will be another discussion. I talk about Same buckets, thing. buckets all the time, right? So like you wanna have your buckets that you're invested in. You wanna have your buckets that are ready to flip at any time. So I have Solana that I will not touch. It's sitting in a thing. I don't care if it's too high or too low, it's just there, right? And then I have other Solana that it, it's purpose is to get in and out of the market as you see things happening. And then you have a bucket that's dry for- powder. So there's two more buckets. Your dry powder, which is money that is earmarked to get back in when everything is down. And then the, the fourth bucket, most important bucket, is your bank account bucket, right? So every time you sell, you wanna put some in the dry powder and some in your bank account. So if everything goes away, you still want, you right? Money. You made money. That's the key thing here. Some people will only have the bank account. And then when it's dry powder time, and I've done this, is I put a bunch of money into my bank account. I didn't have dry powder. So I didn't get to really win that hard because I made money and I was doing I was doing fine. But when everything crashed, I didn't have money to just make the obvious decision and put more money in. The difference between bank account bucket and dry powder bucket, just for clear, is if it's in your bank account, it's very hard for you to put it back in. Because if now it's in your bank account where you pay your rent, your groceries, your life, if it's in the dry bucket thing, you can't use it for your life. You don't go to dinner with your dry powder. So dry powder bucket is for buying back dips. Bank account is for I won and made money and that's why I'm able to afford doing this thing. They're different. Yeah, so one is in USDC or USDT. Just sitting, it's still in your Coinbase or whatever you use. And then you also want to have money that's in your bank account Chase. so that you made money, right? Because if everything goes down, you didn't make money unless it's in your bank account and you don't have dry powder unless it's in there waiting. Not, not in your bank account, because once it's in your bank account, it's so hard 
to put that money back in, right? I'm waiting for somebody to say mention taxes, so just go ahead and ask it so we can answer that. Taxes are a big thing well, as well. Just, the problem with the taxes is that nowadays, I'm sure all of your accountants have told you, you do have to declare coin sales and you Coinbase is now IRSable. That is true. But sometimes you have to understand that in the crypto game, when you do make short-term gains, you do have to pay some taxes. What are you gonna do? You're made, you made, we, we bought Ethereum at 200 bucks or whatever, and then it was $2,000. Like you're not gonna make it out alive without having to pay some taxes. It's just what happens. It depends and, on what country you're in, but. And stay. so on, on taxes, uh, there, there's actually two important things in Cage. We'll talk about, we'll talk about write-offs. Um, for losses. But the most important thing about taxes that you have to realize is you want to pay taxes because that's what allows you to get leverage from banks, right? So you have, you have a choice. Let's say theoretically, you didn't want to pay taxes. You did everything in cash. Like you cannot go to the bank and say, Hey, I have this amount of money and I want to borrow money. So the way rich people get rich is by using debt. It's you a very live drug dealer life. No. It's a bad way to go. You can't do anything. You have to buy stuff in full. You got to buy a car with cash. You got to buy a house with the whole amount. Can you imagine trying to buy a house that's a million dollars? You can't use 100K. You have to buy it for a million cash. Like, what is that? It's just to save some money? Yeah, so the, the, the thing is, is that obviously the bigger the asset, the more you make when it appreciates, right? So if you buy a $50,000 house and it goes up 10%, you made $5,000. If you buy a million dollar house and it goes up 10%, you made $100,000, right? So you want bigger assets and you don't wanna put the full amount in, right? So to get a million dollar house, if you have to have a million dollars cash to buy a million dollars house, that's a big amount of money. But if you're able to go get leverage, use leverage and go get debt, and you can put 20% down, then you can get a million dollar house for $200,000. And then when it goes up 10%, you make 100K, right? So that's where you really get uh, the wins is by using leverage. So paying taxes is a good thing. I learned this the hard way. I had to pay a lot of taxes, but now I'm in good standing with the bank. And if I want to go buy an asset that's worth more than the money that I have in my bank account, they'll lend me the money. Because they trust you. Because they trust me because they've seen over time I've paid taxes. I've made money. So the, the banks, if you didn't pay tax on that money, you didn't make that money right? They look at your tax return and say, okay, how much did he pay? Not how much did he make? Right. So you paid 30% on a million dollars. That means you made a million bucks, right? So that's what the whole game is about is what you pay taxes on and your credit score matters as well. Um, that's why you do want to have credit cards. Yep. You want to have credit cards. So this is something we'll, we'll get into like the financial stuff. I think that it's super interesting. There um, is a way to also not pay taxes on coins and on NFT stuff. So you could also do both. You could pay taxes on some if you wanted to, but it's important to also pay taxes and not constantly try to avoid it. But there is ways. Yeah, so you can harvest and we'll, this will be, maybe we'll do a whole tax session, but you can harvest losses, which is what a lot of people do at the end of the year, right before the tax season happens, is if the coins are down, they'll sell to get a loss on paper. The new year will start. They'll get to depreciate that money. That'll be a write-off. And then they'll buy back in. Yeah. And uh, that's a way that you can harvest the loss. For uh, So let's say you made a bunch of money that year. You want to harvest some losses to offset your gains and then buy back into the asset uh, that when the next year starts. So you're pushing your, your tax liability into the future. You can write off, depends on, on what it is that you do for business and how, well, what kind of like, uh, are you married? Are you, do you have children? There's a bunch of things, but also like, what if you don't declare it, Ryden? Is it getting uh, constantly more difficult to like not declare uh, money? And that's also illegal. So uh, we're not going to talk about strategies for defrauding the IRS. We will talk. So there's a, there's a thing. Tax uh, tax avoidance is breaking the law, but. But tax minimization is not against the law. It's actually encouraged, right? So you want to minimize your taxes by doing smart things, but you don't want to avoid taxes because that is illegal. So you, we don't do anything that's illegal here. What we do is like you can go buy apartment buildings. And then one of the strategies is that you can depreciate. But this is why people buy apartment buildings is because there's a lot of units, right? And so you have a lot of refrigerators, you have a lot of uh, washer and dryers, you have a lot of ranges, you have a lot of microwaves, toaster ovens, 
all of those things, because you have multiples, you have 50 of them in each one in each unit, you're able to depreciate that every year because every year it becomes less and less valuable. And so the government allows you to write that off. And you can take that money that your assets have depreciated and offset some of the money that you made that year. So that's that's one of the tax uh, strategies that you can use is, and this is what a lot of rich people do, is they buy apartment buildings, A, because they get recurring passive income, and B, because they get to depreciate the money that they're making on other businesses. And so you need to have that balance and your accountant will help you uh, with all of that. Um, but yeah, so that that... That is, uh, we're going to have a lot of these discussions where we can drill down. This was sort of like the first of many discussions where we're going over the broad, uh, the broad strokes of a investing and narratives and the metagame, which is very important. And then, I mean, these are all interconnected, right? It's like, a, how do you make money and how do you make smart investment decisions? How do you keep money? How do you keep the money? Which is like what buckets you're putting things in, and how do you make money when it goes down as well as when it goes up, right? So. The, the real money you make is when it goes down and you're able to buy because you're setting yourself up so that when it's up, then you make money. Once it's already up, it's too late to make money. You're playing catch up and that's who gets fucked. The people who buy up here, oh, it's over. The only, you have to do the opposite of the market. I'm sure you guys have all heard this. You and, have to act intuitively. Yeah, so you have to be doing the opposite of what everyone else is doing. So when there's fear, that's when you buy. And this is like such a cliche thing, but it's very true. And no one knows when fear is and when greed is. But you're supposed to sell into greed and buy into fear. But no one really knows when fear is and when greed is. It's, and it's sometimes you think it'll go down 12% and you go, oh, it's fear in the market. But really, it's just a little dip in a greedy phase. You want to know when fear is? Fear is when people say, I don't fuck with this crypto or this NFT or this real estate or this stock shit. It's not for me. You, you, you really don't want to mess with this. It's a bad idea. There's the fear. The greed is when somebody said, I put in $1,000 and I got 12K, maybe it'll become 25K. There's the greed. When the guy that made 12K wants to make 25K, sell half of your portfolio. When everybody thinks cryptos are dead, NFTs are stupid, maybe it's a good idea to sell them. Yeah. Buy the fear and sell the greed. And so you got, and it gets, there's multiple phases to fear, right? There's like little fear, like we're in a fear stage now. But there could also be the actual fear stage when everything's totally fucked. Where it, things are, if Seoul goes back down to $30, right? And it wipes out 90% of the people who made, everyone's gonna be negative, right? If Seoul hits $30, almost everyone who didn't get in extremely early got wrecked. Got wrecked. So you thought you were a genius buying at $70 and then it was at $235 and you're literally Warren Buffett. If it goes back down to 30, uh, you're totally screwed. But that's when you're supposed to buy. So that's when you, when the market was high, you were supposed to put away money into your two buckets, your two outside crypto buckets, right? Which is your bank account and your dry powder. And then you have your other investments, which is like the blue chips, the altcoins, the NFTs. And we can talk about both of these different bucket areas. Um, this is the tough part about NFTs versus crypto, by the way. I was talking about this with somebody the other day. Because it's like, when you buy an NFT, if you only get one, it's, and let's say it goes up, it's tough because you buy an NFT that goes up, and now you only have one of them, and now you're like, wait, do I sell it? Because then I won't have this NFT, and then I'm out, and I don't know if it's going to keep going higher. But if you have cryptos, where say you bought 50 Solana, and then it goes up, you could sell 20 of your Solana. It's a little easier to break them down. You can't, it's not like having one NFT, where it's like, do I sell it? or not, unless you do that thing where you buy two, one to hold and one to sell, it's just very tricky. That's why the NFTs are difficult. Yep, and it's exactly like when I was when I was a kid, I used to buy and sell shoes. And this is like the analogy with the NFTs is that we would always call it one to rock and one to stock. Right. So like you would want to buy the shoes because you like shoes and you would want to use one of the pairs, but then that pair loses value. And you know that in 10 years, everyone's going to want it. So you'd stock, you'd buy two of them and you'd stock one and you'd rock one. And so that's a similar thing with NFTs. Abraham, it's possible. It depends on the war and it depends on a lot of stuff right now. It is possible. He's always on that preparation for extreme fear stage, which is when you just unload and buy everything and hold and don't think about it for a year. Uh, it's possible that it's not. That's why it's not bad to buy right now too, even if it goes down more. So long as 80 bucks or whatever, and you buy some, it goes down to 60, you didn't lose. Because if it ends up going to 300, you won both times. And then 
Tia, who's been on this entire time, uh, yes, it is similar to the the 70 20 10 rule. It doesn't always have to fall into those numbers, though. Yeah, that's so that's a really basic strategy, which is totally kind of correct. Like, uh, I think one of my personal strategies is that I never care what the market's gonna do. You wanna be able to be good in any scenario, right? So you wanna minimize, you're gonna cut your upside potential, but you're minimizing your downside risk. So it's called downside protection, right? So if it goes up, you wanna be happy. And if it goes down, you wanna be happy, right? So what does that mean? There's no scenario in which you're not happy because you're prepared for all the things, right? So I might not make as much money as someone who just YOLO holds Bitcoin from 2012 until 2022. They're going to make the most money if they're right. But what if they were wrong? Then they can't buy a house. They can't start their life. They can't do investment funds. They can't do all this stuff. And so you have to basically put yourself in a position to win no matter what happens in the casino, right? If the dealer busts, you want to win. And if you win, you want to win. So, and we can talk about the strategy and that's sort of my way of doing it is that if crypto goes down, we have a thing on the board over here that says always be selling. So when, when you're in profit, you always want to sell half, right? So if you keep selling half, you'll always have half of your, your money still in the crypto. So you're still invested. If Bitcoin goes up, I'm stoked because guess what? I made money. It's a one foot in, one foot out. It's a one foot in, one foot out type of diversification. So it's like we're in one of the the most volatile and risky asset classes, you might as well take a conservative approach to the, riskiest to the riskiest asset class, right? So it's like, you don't wanna go risk on, risk on, where you're just YOLO degen on the most risky thing you could possibly do. You'll always lose. You're gonna lose. And, and that story has happened so many times to people in this office, they come in, they're up so much money, they turn 50K into 250K, and then it goes all the way down to $25,000 and they're fucked. And they're now they're lost money. And they have to wait for the next cycle, which is always the worst thing off just, to happen. Just imagine if you have a bunch of Solana and they're 240 and you sell a bunch of Sol at 240. Imagine right now it's like going to an outlet shopping to be able to go and buy Solana at 80. You could wait because like right in a little bit above. I don't know if you were asking if it's good to sell a thousand dollars worth of Solana or a thousand Solanas, but you're talking about selling when it's down to buy if it's lower. It's like, uh, it's more about sell when it's up. So then when it's down, doesn't matter what type of down it is, you can. Right. So what you should theoretically be doing right now is it's at $80. You you're, should be buying because it's buy low, money. but not all of your money, right? So buy half when it's time to buy and sell half when it's time to sell. So if you buy at $80 and it goes down, guess what? You have more money in reserve to double your position again, right? So if you have $10,000, you buy 5,000 at uh, at 80 and the dollar cost average in and dollar cost average out. So if it goes down to 60, you take that $5,000 that you have left, you take 2,500 of it, you buy more. If it goes down to 30, you take 2,500, you take half of that, you take 1,500 and you buy more. So then you're basically, every time it gets worse for you, you're doubling your position. So you would have loved to have, when it was at 80, you know, you would have loved to have triple the amount of Solana because you still believe in it long term. You just didn't catch the exact bottom, right? And so you always want to be buying. And then when it's going up and it's at $250 and you think it's going to a thousand, you got to sell some at 250 and you got to sell some at 300 and you got to sell some at 450 and you got to sell something at 500 and 600 and 700. You got to be selling this whole time. The reason why dollar cost averaging is so important is that it takes some stupid level of balls to be able to just sell and pick a number. When everything is going up, it's very difficult to just make a real sale because in your mind, you're thinking, dude, this could just go crazy. When Solana was 250, everybody and their mother was like, this is gonna be 500 in the next two weeks. And look at it right now. It's 80 bucks and stays here, goes up to 100 for five seconds. It's just like, look at how we were thinking before. It was a 500, no, there was no chance it was gonna come down. Just like right now when you ask people if Solana's gonna be $1,000, they'll tell you that you're stupid. And it's just like, right, okay, we see how this is. Everybody lives in the moment too much. Yep, no one can no one can predict the future. And then also the other thing is no one can time the top and no one can time the bottom. Huh? Oh. Thank you, Creeper. Um, and we're gonna get another mic. We have it in the other room. We just have to set it up. We have to get all the settings going. Um, 
and Drew, yeah, we'd love to do this type. Of, I'd love to do this more than the giveaways. Hopefully, Fridays are the giveaway day, and we can just drop knowledge on real estate and investing in robots and automation companies. And uh, so, a lot of my match eats market cap, Cardano. Let's see how how ETH fixes its problems with its gas fees and stuff. But everybody thinks that uh, there's no chance for Solana to get up to ETH, and ETH is too famous. But if I remember correctly, there was no chance for Ethereum to ch catch up to Bitcoin, and people laughed at me. Uh, so I don't really know, uh, but I can tell you right now, if Ethereum 2.0 or whatever happens with its, with its L2 stuff and Metis, if it doesn't really get figured out, and Ethereum is only the coin of the rich people where the fees are okay, to spend that kind of money, Solana will absolutely overtake it. I got a buddy who's trying to tell me about this coin called Kadena, which apparently is doing even faster transactions than Solana, but we're getting into the degen risky risky and I'm not really interested. I'm just a Solana first kind of guy, so it's Julian. Yeah, of the risky things, of the new things, it's probably one of the safer bets, right? So you always have to blend your risk where it's like you're playing a risky game you don't want to then take a second risk. You want to you want to basically do the least risky, risky thing. And so that's that's where a lot of the NFT, like the reason why I got into Solana NFTs is A, because of the audience and uh, and B, because it's it's the risky, least risky thing. Right. So you have to blend your risks so you can uh, like, for example, with automation investing, like investing in early stage companies is one of the riskiest things you can do. But then I chose a, a sector that I don't believe is risky. So you're blending the risk profile and then you can basically stop. You can you can change the, the actual risk because you're blending it. Right. Tia's so, pretty smart. Tia, are you a whale? Tia, yeah, he is. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. Everybody is extremely short-sighted. This is why people like Buffett and a lot of the older investors are very upset in a time like now. Because the people are, they want to microwave stuff. They don't want to roast it. And this is not how you get yummy food. Yep. And Warren Buffett's cool with waiting, right? Like that's, patience is a, is a big thing. Like sometimes you have to be extremely patient. Be careful with Terra, by the way. Read about it. Uh, Luna? I don't know about that. I mean, I've heard it was good, but it's uh, it's kind of like Tether. I, I, maybe they have like a problem. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are trying to get rich overnight. That's why they go buy courses from people who drive rented Ferraris and say that they're millionaires. Um, right. When the real knowledge is in other places. And like, if you're rich, you don't need to like charge right. twenty five ninety nine to get like. This is what's happening with Luna. They're burning it. And yeah, my quote was pretty mm. good. That one's not a bad one. People want a microwave. They don't want to roast. That's pretty good. Yeah. So drop heaters like that. Yeah. So I, I like the direction that the, that this stream is going um, and hopefully that you guys like it too. So we can have, you know, maybe one game day, one giveaway day, and then a lot of days where we uh, talk about things with other people, um, where we can talk about different strategies, tax stuff, like just sort of downloading all this information. Um, there's going to be a philosophy day where we can, uh, talk about like, uh, how to win friends and influence people, which is a book that we both read. Uh, yeah, you gotta get, you, if you're not a whale, we gotta get you, uh, you gotta be with everybody else. You're like cage and everybody, but I'll tell you guys this much. Everybody that's here in this stream all these days right now needs to understand something very important. We're in a, you know, buy the fear, sell the greed. We're in the fear, not the greed moment. So this time right now, whether it goes down more or not, is the time where you're allowed to make money. So we're doing all this stuff, digging around, flipping for one soul. Uh, I used to gamble with one Bitcoin because I had them at 400 bucks. And the thing about doing that is it's funny because they could just work work and you're out here playing around. So you want to make sure during this time, whether you don't have almost any money at all, no money at all can become huge money if you play your shit right, especially in a fear moment, not a greed moment. So you guys are here in the time when you can make money, not when you can't, not when everyone is rich and everyone is greedy. Right now, all of you have an opportunity. So it's good that you guys are interested in listening and it's good that you guys are interested in learning. Uh, but And you guys need to put this to work, but I'll tell you right now that everybody here has the opportunity in the next like one to two years to like actually have money, because that's just what happened with us. Yeah, it takes some time, but this is definitely the time. You guys are in the right place, honestly. Like, we're going to be dropping some heaters. Um, 
and put put you in a in a right place mentally and philosophically and strategy wise to be able to capitalize on uh, what's going on. The three soul flipped. Yeah, we're gonna, we'll get back to the degen the degen life. That's just for fun and it's cool and it gives people a chance. But make sure that you start organizing your portfolio and your plans and get it set up now. Yeah, and now is the time. Now is the time. So I think we're gonna we're gonna do one giveaway just to to end it, and then we'll we'll finish up. We were gonna do five, but we gotta we'll... get Tia going. This week we'll figure you out, Tia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll get message us. He's in the he's in the Discord. I talked to him. Um, yeah, but it's gonna get good for the whales. So everybody's gotta make sure they're one of those, if, especially if you're coming here every day. Um, all right, we're gonna do in the Discord. Where are we at? Holders. Uh, so we're gonna do two. To Solana, um, to the holders. Let's see, boom. Two winners of one Solana. Head over there, hit start. Yeah, we'll do more crypto advice tomorrow. Uh, let's discuss in the uh, in the Discord what kind of topics that you guys want, and we can we can. Uh, we're also going to be doing a bunch of interviews tomorrow with founders, so it might come on Wednesday. Um, we can play some games and, and talk about uh, stuff or shift around the days that we we do things. Um, yeah, if you're not a holder and you want to become a holder, we're going to be setting up a bot that tracks... Oh, shit. No, no, I did it right. Did I not? It's right. Oh, shit. What did I do? Start. Oh, now it's started. All right, here it is. All right, all right, all right. Now it's there. It is there now. Um, it is in holders giveaway. Uh, so we're. I think it's gonna pick two winners. Yeah, two winners. Um, let's see. Yeah, so so if you if you don't hold it, uh, hold a giveaway card. We will be uh, giving away cards to the most active people in Discord. So we're gonna set up a bot that tracks all that, and then you know the top ten or the top twenty will be entered into a giveaway that we'll do on Friday. And so we can uh, reward the people that are the most active in the community. We're also gonna be doing giveaway cards for people who join the raids. So if you join the raids channel and you retweet on Twitter or you comment on the YouTube videos, you'll get ten coins. When you have a hundred coins, you can enter into uh, get a giveaway card, which we'll be doing on Friday. Um, so the giveaway cards are now primarily going to be used to grow the community. So if you have any, uh, if you want to help out some way, we can give you giveaway cards. Um, if you want to, if you have any strategies for giveaways on other channels, um, that's what the giveaway cards are going to be for. Uh, we're no longer going to be giving away the cards to just random people who then put them on the market and drop the floor price. Doesn't make any sense. Um, so the whole point of the giveaway card is to grow a big community and give back uh, any of the profits that we make on referral fees from DCF or with sponsors or any of that stuff goes straight back to the community members, which are cardholders. So that is the, the idea, the philosophy behind this, this flywheel that we're building, this community that we're building. Um, and so we're building the biggest and strongest community on Solana. I have no doubt that that's going to happen. And then once we do that, we're going to go take over all of crypto and we're going to be a force to be reckoned with. So that's that's what's coming up. Um, we're just getting started here, guys. We're just getting started. Uh, Tion, hit me in the DMs. Uh, we're going to figure all that out. We got two minutes remaining. I will probably send uh, send you guys the Solana after the stream. Um, and then Cage, can you go find someone for us to uh, raid? We're gonna we're gonna finish up the stream with a raid. We haven't quite figured it out yet how how we want to uh, and Cage. Should we should we should we uh, do the same person again? Maybe get some goodwill with like Alpha, Alpha Exchange. Maybe just to double down. Sure. All right, let me go see who's online and who has more viewers. Um, Twitch. By the way, everybody, uh, favorite my my tweet and retweet my tweet if you like the way the stream went today. At K Swaya, non fungible Killian. I'll take some retweets and some favorites if everybody liked how uh, the stream went today. If they like me in here talking with Julian about not necessarily degenerative things, but smart things. 
All right, we're going to do Alpha Exchange. And uh, maybe we'll do a raid on Killian's tweet. We'll post the link. Maybe we'll, we'll post the link on the next one. I don't have it here. Um, do you want me to post the link now? Whenever it's already started. Go follow him. Here's his, uh, here's his Twitter. Here's the actual tweet. So if you guys want to go check that out, hit him up there, follow him. Um, and then we are going to finish up today with a raid of Alpha Exchange. Sup, boys? Uh, cool. All right, raid. Alpha. Alpha exchange. We're going to figure out how, how exactly we're going to raid. It's a, it's a work in progress. Yeah, so be organic. Be, uh, be good to them. Hopefully we can do a collab with them in the future. If we just keep showing up, you know, um, they will want to check out our stream. Hey, Abraham, congratulations. Wow. I'll send it to you after. Hey, Big Chef Bugatti. Uh, so we are going to go raid uh, Alpha Exchange. Don't post any links, please. We want to be a good community, not a toxic community. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to see you guys tomorrow. We'll see you in the Discord. If you want to get a giveaway card, exclamation mark JSGC in the Friday, chat. Friday whale giveaway. Don't worry, Clyde. Yep. So we got that. We're going to, once we get our bone feed sorted out, we're going to do our $500 leverage trade on stream for uh, Tenuous Grips. He won last week. Um, yeah, so we are going to uh, see you tomorrow with a couple of interviews and uh, some more dope stream stuff. Peace, guys.